morning and good night. Thanks again for downloading the Body Snatchers podcast. If you like what you hear today, don't forget to subscribe and comment. So let's get started. Enjoy the show. All right, guys. Good morning. Good night. Thank you for choosing the Body Snatchers podcast. Tino here hanging out with Gia. Uh, Today, we're going to be talking a little bit about the Final Fantasy VII demo that recently came out. Uh, Before we get into all that, if you guys are new, please head over to BodySnatchersMedia.com. Add us on whatever social media platform you want. We're on Instagram and Facebook, Twitter, fun stuff, all the good stuff. Uh, Also, if you're on our website, please head over to the Patreon account. We're going to be announcing, um, I think, the first, like, prize giveaway uh for patreon members very soon so yeah check that out uh all that stuff being said uh gia headed out here uh what was that last weekend gia or the weekend yeah, before it was, it was last weekend not well yeah it was last weekend yeah gia flew out here from uh from san diego to chicago and we went to c2e2 and it was a whole bunch of fun and uh gia uh was partying too hard with us and was having a rough day i was having a really rough day oh my gosh <laughs> And I was oh, glad God. kind of that like C2E2 isn't as like busy as the conventions I'm used to going to. Like there was a lot of people, but it was relatively small. Like I was kind of expecting it to be bigger. I've never been to C2E2, but with it's everything small. that everybody was saying about it, I figured it would at least be like a, me- a medium sized convention. And it just wasn't. Nah. It was like a, a very small scale one, but there was lots of good cosplay. Uh, I found out later that some of my like Twitch affiliate friends, or I'm sorry, their partners, but some of them were there for like the cosplay contest and things of that nature. And I was just like, why didn't I know y'all were out here? This is my home. (laughs) (laughs) More importantly, the lesson here is don't drink that much whiskey the night before. Yeah, definitely don't. Please don't. Because then you're going to be sitting up against the wall for at least 30 minutes while your friends go and try to find some of their friends because you don't want to walk around. Gia was like, I'm so hardcore, I'll, I'll drink everybody here. I was like, Gia, please. <laughs> My house is we do Bible studies here. This is a place of worship. They don't like, do Bible studies there. Don't let him lie to you. What do you mean? <laughs> you don't know for sure. I could. Wow. <laughs> oh, but, um, but with the podcast uh, contest also, just keep in mind, guys, that um, we do have stickers now, or at least they're getting ordered right now, but those will be starting to be sent out like quarterly for people that are patrons it's another thing yeah we're just trying to give away some stuff here and take all of our things pretty much yeah actually this uh this week we should we really need to get that prize uh up and out but we'll we'll talk about that in the side so getting back to the uh the final fantasy 7 demo that we've all been waiting for the game the official game comes out was it uh, april 10th yes so yeah, it got pushed back a little bit. That's okay. But I can say with confidence, somebody who has uh, beaten Crisis Core t- twice in the main game, uh, Jesus, I mean, a probably over times. 20 times. Yeah, like easily love, love the series um, and, and Advent Children as well. Uh, this this is going to be good. This is going to be really good. And I really want to talk about some of the ins and outs and little things that we noticed in the demo, um, kind of front to back, because you're in the... Uh, like sector seven like slums ish area like close to it uh what was that the uh what's the what's the first area called do you remember no <laughs> ah whatever it's it's oh you're over in the sector seven area and you're new uh, the the mako reactor yeah the the oh you were asking what the reactor was called i just well it escaped me while i was talking <laughs> the, the term mako like i just wasn't oh there. gotcha see i wasn't i wasn't sure what you were trying to prompt me for i could have told you that that's what I asked the you. Reactor. But okay, but it sounded like you were asking like which specific like zone versus like inside the reactor. No. Okay. My bad. That'd be, that would be a weird question. See, I don't I think that's an answerable question. Energy, Tino, because like I couldn't I couldn't end your sentence for you right then. Ah, well, like I said, I, I just was trying to grasp onto it. Yep. But anyway, guess we got to talk uh, more. Uh, well, first, yeah, right. Uh, I mean, the first thing here that that should stand out to you is just like the aesthetics. This game looks so good. Arguably the the best game I've ever seen. No, it definitely is. Um, Like even in the first scenes, because the very first thing you start to see is like the trailer for the demo that they've put out. And Aerith's clothing literally looks like real clothing. Like when she stands up, it ruffles, it blows in the wind. That's the first time that I've seen clothing move and act like actual clothing in any video game like at all yeah like they 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 spent a lot of time on this like it's 
mind boggling. Like I'm pretty sure my PS4 Pro is going to explode trying to play this game, but it's probably going to be worth it. I mean, I hope my regular PS4 does not explode while trying to play this <laughs> game because I would be extremely sad. Right? I may, uh, maybe I'll put in that solid state drive I've been putting off just to see if that helps. I don't know. It's only going to help with loading times probably, but probably. it's, uh, yeah. Oh my God. It just, it just looks so good. Just going to end up being that person that takes your PlayStation apart and inputs it into your computer so you can play the games directly from your PC. I might. I could put it in a tower. I might do that for fun. Don't tempt me. <laughs> I might. Uh, and then even like the side characters they spent a lot of time on. Like Jesse, I think I fell in love with Jesse. And I, I didn't. I, okay, well, that's you, but well, I did. She looked great. Ever, and She does look great. But have you ever watched the Team Four Star abridged version of Final Fantasy VII? Not all of it. I've just seen some clips. So even with some of the clips, you know for sure why they made her like seem as if she is very derpy. Because some of the things that she was saying, I was just like, no wonder they made you seem like you're an idiot in this abridged version. Because it would just be silly things. Like she would just like fall under something where she could have ran, but no, now she's trapped under rocks. And then like having the the actual voice actor now with it, I was just like, oh, this is why they made fun of you. This. This is exactly why. <laughs> Oh, hate but she did girl. look beautiful. I want to make her. I want to cosplay her actually because the armor that they like the details on the armor and her costume in general were just so well done. So I can agree with you there that like they they made her look very good. That's pretty much all. All I really cared about. But yes, um, it, it looked phenomenal. Way better than it, uh, I expected it to look. I was with that. Uh, obviously, the aesthetics, like we said, amazing. Uh, I think if I had to have one concern. It's, it's going to be the combat system. I don't think it's bad at all. Um, I just think it's going to take some getting used to because they give you a boss fight in this demo at the end, that big old robotic scorpion. And uh, boy, I mean, it's the scorpion's not easy. And I mean, the most difficult part about it to me was just trying to like get used to switching through the combat system because there's just so many options. It's way harder than what you get in Final Fantasy 15, I would say. Well, yeah, definitely. And it's not even so much that it's hard to switch well, it is hard to switch from the combat mechanics, but it's also like trying to figure out how to use attacks in a way. And they kind of like build you up through it, obviously through the demo. They're like, hold hold the square button to do X, Y, and Z. Press the square button to do X, Y, and Z. Like you can switch between these two combat modes. Like Cloud has one where he's just a quick hitter and then he has another one where, where he moves extremely slow, but his slashes do more damage and he like moves very quickly with the slashes, although he's walking like he broke both of his legs. Um, True. But it's also like trying to, one, uh, have the, the robots feel pressed and then stagger them so that you can deal extra damage and then also trying to figure out how to fit your limit breaks in this. And then... I mean, you even get to do Barrett's two different modes. And well, I mean, he really doesn't have like two different modes. You can either charge and use that attack and well, like when it gets to the overcharge mode, but there's just a lot of extra mechanics and the being able to switch between the characters, I thought was very well done too, but it's, it's definitely a system that's going to take getting used to because like, I had Sean over my shoulder because I played it right before I flew back to California and he was just like, do this, do this attack. And I'm like, Sean, let me play the dang game. But it was just like a, it was a hassle for sure. And I think as you play yeah, it more, it, it'll get easier to do. Like, obviously it'll become like yeah. second nature, just like any other game, but it, it's definitely a learning curve right off the bat. Oh yeah. The, I mean, the, the options are there. So it's, it's, it's amazing that you can hop into whichever character you want, like instantly um, that's on the battlefield and, and, you know, just start moving forward with their attacks and their specials and items and whatever. Like, it's great. But did you also see that, like, even though they went with the Final Fantasy 15, like fighting style, sort of, they also left it turn-based. Like you can't use items until your ATB gauge fills you can't do spells until it's filled you can't do other attacks until it's filled so even though you can do like constant regular attacks like you can't use anything outside of that until your gauge fills and i was like really excited about that i was like yes they kept like the the essence of the turn-based like gaming in this like you could be dying and because your atb gauge is like not filled you can't use a potion yeah no i mean and, and i agree like i i love that as well uh, but I mean, still like my concern is going to be, you know, when, when you're switching with the characters, it's just going to take a long time to get used to setting up your, your strategy. Cause they're not all, you know, side by side, like traditional turn base. So, 
you know, you might have to bounce to, you know, for instance, like in this demo, you'll bounce to Barrett uh, and have to use, you know, a lightning um, attack or, you know, thunder uh, to, you know, weaken the robot and bring his defenses down and then hurry up and bounce back to cloud and then, you know, like time the limit break or, or you know, just as normal special, which they do separate the two, which I liked. Uh, we can get that in a second. Um, but, you know, th then you can do like heavier damage and then you bounce back to Barrett. And it's not like rocket science, like when you say it, but in the heat of the moment, it's it's tricky. It's it's uh, I'm looking forward to it, like the challenge or whatever, but mm -hmm. I probably going to be the hardest part about getting used to the game well and then something i also notice is that when you are going through to pick like a skill or an ability or even to do your limit break because that build that gauge builds up just like it built up in in the original game which also was like i was like yes please um but when you go to start selecting these attacks you see that they slow down the fight exponentially so you're not getting like wrecked while you're trying to decide on what to use it goes into slow-mo and i mean eventually i guess if you were just sitting there in that screen because you couldn't decide you would eventually get whacked by something but they made it so that you're not it's not too difficult that you're just gonna die right away but they they left it to where like you still have to make a decision in a good amount of time too right uh another thing that i like about this game is the uh kind of like the the side banter that they've added in between the characters, you know, as opposed to like just the main dialogue. It's fantastic. The shit that Barrett says to Cloud under his breath. like Yeah, I some of it I was like, yes, but then some of it I was like, could you please shut up, Barrett? Like, I'm tired of hearing you. Like, I forgot how much of a jerk Barrett is at first until playing this. And then like his constant quips. It, it's, it's the same problem I have with Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is that I don't need all of the extra talking in between like scenes or when you're moving from battle to battle. Like some of it's good, but the just consistent banter bothers me because... I don't know. It's just a personal opinion. But I do know that a lot of people do enjoy that, too, because one, I liked Cloud just being monotone with Barrett all the time, and it was just hilarious. Oh, it's great. I think it's going to build up a lot of character development, you know, just in addition to everything else that we already got, which I thought was pretty good for the original game. So I don't know. I, I, I'm looking I'm looking forward to, to seeing it, you know, and, and us already knowing the characters, it's just going to allow us to see them in a whole new light. And, you know, not just like how they are, what they say, but with the way that, you know, this game looks now that we can see very clear and distinct, you know, facial expressions and stuff for certain situations and the voice actors like it's just I, I mean, I'm really excited. It's, it's almost like playing a whole new like, I mean, it is a whole new game, but it's almost like as if it's the same story, but it's as if it's like different, you know? Well, it, and it definitely is. Like in the beginning when they were talking about the remake, they were telling us how they were adding in all of the stuff that they had to remove for time's sake in the original game. So parts are going to be expanded. It's just going to make more sense. Like for instance, the Honey Bee Inn, like that whole section made little to no sense to me anytime that I played it. Like I understood the purpose of it, but you could tell that they had pulled so much out even from that section. And when you do research on it, it straight up says they're like, yeah, we had to pull out X, Y, and Z from this because it was just too long and we couldn't, you know, really keep it in there. Um, and the fact of the matter is, is that the first part of this game, even though they're doing it in episodic releases, is that it's still going to fill two blue fill two Blu-ray discs for you to play. Now, Blu-ray discs hold a lot of information. So the fact that it's going to be two full Blu-rays, there's just going to be a lot of content. And I'm excited for that. Well, it's going to be it's going to be great. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one thing that I've been saying this whole time and I still stand behind it is, I, you know, maybe to an extent like they could be, you know, trying to capitalize on money. I get that. It's a business thing. But at the same time, they're working and spending so much time on each section of the game that comes out. I mean, what we got out of this demo of every sections like that. I mean, that's that's amazing. It's almost like getting multiple games. You know, it's not it's not going to feel like you're spending 40 or 50 bucks for a short like, you know, expansion or whatever. Like they're putting a lot of time and energy and effort. And I think this is going to be like one of the best uh, games of our of our generation. Well, probably. definitely. And, you know, everybody was getting mad that they kept pushing it back, kept pushing it back. Like every year it was like, oh, no, uh, it's got the placeholder date still of December 31st. But like when you see it and everything at least with the demo and even with the trailers you know exactly why they pushed it back like they weren't taking any shortcuts with this game and i'm very very happy that they did oh yeah and you know when you when you get into this this boss fight 
uh, and, and get a chance to feel the mechanics and how smooth everything is. It, uh, the only thing I could think the entire time, like I was trying to enjoy it, but like I'm thinking about like future battles in this game, like, uh, you know, very distinctive, Dude, uh, you know, like trademark Admiral battles. And I'm like, yeah, I'm like, Ooh. imagine how insane this is going to be. You know, or, or even just Sephiroth, you know, like imagine the way they're going to hype him up with the way his feathers are floating. Like, oh, my God, I just want to see Supernova <laughs> animated in this new way. <laughs> I yeah, that long, long, long attack with all the random mathematical equations as he's like busting the whole solar system. But somehow your group of people survive. <laughs> I want to see Knights of the Round. I do. I want, there's so many Knights of the Round. I want to see Fat Chocobo. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. And I, I wonder, like, you know, how I, I guarantee you the Golden Saucer is probably going to be, like, just amazing, astonishing. It's just going to, I bet it's just going to be a port of Golden Saucer in Final Fantasy XIV. Like, they're just going to be like, we made this whole world. Let's make it look prettier for this game. And then that's going to be the Golden Saucer. And you're just going to get lost there. Like, I guarantee people are going to spend hundreds of hours in that area. Especially, like, trying if they keep the the Chocobo breeding, like, whew. At, at yeah. least, at least 100 hours. There's there's no way Chocobo. they're they're going to get rid of it. Like they're, they're definitely going to add it back in and it's going to be way more complex and you're going to have to go through all that, the, all the steps to get the black chocobo and the, you know, the, the actual golden one. And, and I hope that, you know, I don't know how the world map like is going to be, but if it, if it feels like truly open world and you get to just get certain chocobo that get you access in the areas you couldn't get to before, I, I'm just, gonna, I'm going to lose it. I'm probably going to sink like 300 hours into this game. Well, yeah. And I feel like they'll probably have it open world. Like, 15 was uh i I mean that's just uh, like making a guesstimation like i don't know for sure that they will but it i i feel like they're going to go that route especially since they changed the combat to mirror more so their 13 and 15 layout imagine how the like the remember the serpent in the in the big area that like yeah the migar serpent Oh my God. Like, just, just ima- like, I, I want to know, like, how are they going to do it? Are they going to give us like a, a boat and you, you get on the boat and go through the marsh area and get attacked? Like, like, no, just, you're probably going to have how. to go find a chocobo and run really quickly away from it. <laughs> well, well, yeah, but I'm just saying like before the chocobo, there's, there's other ways to access it. And, you know, cause they, they have to give it to you cause that it's available before you get to chocobos. Mm-hmm. Well, if they do it the same, I guess, you know, or, or how is it going to feel like in an open world environment where you get to sit and you, and you get like the, uh, the plane for the first time or the, mm-hmm. uh, or the rocket ship? Like, dude, if you get to just bl- like, imagine being in final fantasy 14 or I'm sorry, 15, like, like with the regalia, but like on a much larger scale, like, I, I don't know if you ever unlocked flight in that, but it was breathtaking and changed the entire feel of the game. I did. And then I flew around and crashed a couple of times and I was like, I'm not going to that dungeon. So. <laughs> oh you mean the uh the piteous dungeon or yeah whatever? the one that you can only reach by flying the regalia yeah oh yeah i went in there and died like uh just trying to land the first like 10 times and when i finally got it i think the regalia blew up but like i survived somehow so then i just walked over there and got through it and then spent like two days trying to beat that damn dungeon. i remember I, did. I couldn't even like land on flat ground much less yeah, that area. They made it so hard. Yeah, they, they did. Kind of just give us a little landing strip, but no, I had to watch like six YouTube videos. I'm like, bro, I'm doing it what out, you're doing. How to like yeah. tilt properly to just land. It's so stupid. Yeah. Uh, but but whatever, it's worth it. You, you get over those things and you look back like I'm a champion. Uh, but yeah, I guess, you know, I'm trying to think if there's anything, you know, else. I liked, um, I really liked the feel for opening up the chest in this game because it it's uh, reflective of like, you know, the original, but like it just has a really nice touch to it. Yeah, I also like that they had extra items in the boxes that you could just destroy. Yes. Just like running around and, and breaking everything. Excuse me, my name is Cloud and I'm going to whack these boxes with my buster sword. Stop oh, me. Oh, yeah. And that's another thing. Did you like when I was using Cloud specifically, I, I, it's hard for me to describe. I spent some time with it because I, I beat this demo twice. And you, when you have Cloud, and especially when he's in his slower uh, stance mode, you just you really feel the weight of the Buster Sword, the way they do the sounds and the way he's walking. Like you just feel like, dude, this is a big fucking sword. Like this is gonna wreck shop. It just feels really good. I don't know if you got that feel out of it. Oh no, I definitely did. Especially because like a few months back, well, it was like June or July. Whenever I was at NTC, someone had this replica Buster Sword, and I got to like pick it up and just like hold it, and it was like twenty pounds, so it was pretty weighty. And I was just like, oh my gosh. If I could be good at swinging this, how would my life <laughs> exist? That's what you got to do. 
Yeah. So yeah, so that's that's where we're at. I can say oh, that. I well, well, one one little bit with the ending. Make sure if you're playing the demo that you, if you do the thirty minute timer for the bomb at the end, make sure you do the twenty minute timer also because you kind of get an ex- extended ending cutscene. It's extended by like 15, 20 seconds, and it's worth it. So. And you have more than enough time to to do everything. The timer doesn't work the same way it worked in the original game, where it would like keep counting if you tried open boxes, and it was counting down while you were fighting the scorpion spider robot thing. Um, so you have more than enough time to make it out in twenty minutes. So if you did not, please do it um, so that you can see the extra bit of cutscene. For the record, I didn't like that. I was talking to Gia about it before we got on today. I was hoping they were going to. Uh keep the timer going so and i'm also hoping that in the real game they do will that be super super hard yeah but uh i don't know i want them to keep it the same well i think i think at least i would hope in the actual game they give you different time options so that you can get that difficulty feel like you can pick like a 10 or 5 minute option maybe but i i believe i remember there being multiple more than just the 20 and, and, and 30 minute i at least remembered a 15 minute uh time or two so we'll see and now i gotta buy a stupid deluxe version because i was i was thinking about cheaping out last minute and just getting the regular one and buying whatever no, extra i've had stuff the I deluxe want. one on pre-order since they revealed it so yeah remind me to buy that like i i meant to and i was like i'm just gonna wait like till a couple days before it comes out yeah i'll, I'll remind or you today. i'll nag you who knows well, yeah, I'm definitely getting day one. In fact, I'm probably going to be extra and take like a th- like a three day weekend for work or something. What is that? The uh, mm, yeah, work's probably listening. Like, I hate this guy. Uh, yeah, because the tenth comes. The tenth take four days <laughs> off tenth. in a row. Excuse me, sir. I yeah, have dude. the coronavirus. So I must stay home from work. It's over for me. Yeah, the tenth is a Friday. So yeah, that's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I mean, there's there's no better time to you know what I mean to do this. It's going to be wild, too, because I'm definitely not podcasting. So, you know, I'll have to let you guys know how that is like a couple weeks later. Got yeah. time for podcast. Not with Final Fantasy's coming out. No, games, we're going to probably do a, a podcast on it finally, like two months later when everybody else has already reviewed it. We're just going to be like, man, we got we didn't even know what day it is. We woke up and we're like, what year is it? Pretty much. I mean, with the amount of time I want to sink into it, assuming that you're going to get at least 30 hours of gameplay which I'm pretty sure you will. Well, it's going to be way more than that, especially on well, two Blu-ray discs. Like, whew. Well, we'll see. Like, I know the data's there, um, but also because there's such fine detail, there's also, there's you know, the possibility that there could be not too much material in there. It could just all be for the data. Um, but, but we'll see. Um, you know, I, I'm being optimistic. I, I think it's, it's going to deliver. Fingers crossed. Either way, we're not going to cover this until at least like two weeks after it drops. <laughs> like, <laughs> I already know. Oh, man. Well, I'm just going to get the treatment for my son because anytime like some game that I'm really interested in comes out, I do spend a lot of time playing, but I give my son attention too. But he always does this mess where he's just like, mom, you're obsessed. Why are you so obsessed with this game? And I'm just like, dude, I don't ask you that when you're playing Minecraft 24 seven or when you're watching the same YouTube videos over and over again, like leave me alone and let me enjoy my life. Right. So that's going to be how, me with the Final Fantasy VII remake, and it's going to be a sad time. Ah, we'll get in there. <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, that's pretty much you know all the points and you know that I wanted to make and bring up and just just kind of talk about it. So yeah. I mean, I'm 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 good. You know, shorter podcast episode today, uh, at least on my end. Um, again, it's only the demo, so it's not the full blown thing. But we wanted to talk about it. If you guys. Uh, you know, haven't played it yet and you own a PlayStation, I mean, you're crazy. Like, it's free. Please, by all means, check it out. It's it's very fun. Um, probably about, uh, maybe about a half hour worth of gameplay unless yeah. you kind of take your time with it. Um, or, I, especially I spent about mode. 30 minutes because uh, we were supposed to leave at like 6 and then, or 5.30 and we ended up like leaving at 6, 6.10. So that's about how long it took me to play it. Yeah, to- totally worth it. One of the best demos I've played in a very long time. I think the last demo that got me like this excited was maybe the demo for Devil May Cry 4, like on PS3 years ago. Mm, Where, like, I like the I- demo I- for 15, but that's also because you were basically in a dreamland and then you got like Carbuncle from it. Oh, I see. I, I liked it, but I uh, the demo, if memory serves correct, the when you did a summon, you killed yourself. Like I was like, what the hell is this? And I ended up changing it. 
yeah they ended up changing it when the game came out you had to like sacrifice yourself in order to do a summons it was really weird. oh yeah, yeah yeah but that was the other so there were two demos I, that there was, was the, like the demo uh, where you summon Rama and it takes all your health and then there was the one where he's a kid and you're like in this dream world well yeah i'm referring to what i believe is the first one based on this conversation yes okay cool yeah well i, I mean it's uh, this. <laughs> well, yeah i mean and i was super hyped for that very first one and i think it delivered like it made it good but i i, I left feeling some type of way about the summon because summons are just you know awesome you know well i was also and, mad in that anyway because the way the summons worked it just didn't make sense like you couldn't just summon whoever you wanted to it was just like a oh shiva sees that you're in danger would you like to summon her and then it's like okay and you barely yeah. got to see them and it was garbage in my opinion but that's neither here I, nor there. I can't wait to I, see I, the summons in seven I, I agree i think i would have preferred like if you get to a point in final fantasy 15 where you could have done the summons like you know uh however you wanted to but at the same time i do think it was kind of a fun twist i mean definitely a disadvantage not anywhere as cool as i wanted it to be but for the sake of the story it kind of made sense so i i, I let sure. it ride I, I allowed it without being too upset now when i have to find 20 after images of this old dude just never to be able to summon him so i guess yeah, it's 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 bittersweet. <laughs> it's it's bittersweet. I get you. They, they looked really cool. Yeah, but they're gonna look cooler. Especially the Carbuncle. end. Carbuncle's uh, gonna look like garbage because it's a like they made it a fox with a big ass head, and I was just like, why can't you just leave Carbuncle kind of looking the same way that it looked before? Now we have this chibi fox that just looks terrible, but I'm still looking forward to it because I want that reflect in my life. I liked Carbuncle. You mean person. the new remake? The how it looks? You like yeah, that? Uh, yeah. Oh, I love foxes and I don't like that. I'm not in love with it. I'm going to pull it up again and look at it in a little bit. It, it, pull it up and then pull it up, pull it up right now. in every other game and then tell me that that looks good. All right. I'm Are you really right typing right now? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm legit like looking it up. Uh, Final Fantasy Seeing y'all get an extended podcast episode. Remake, Carbuncle. <laughs> yeah, okay. So again, <laughs> looking at it again a little bit more closely. Um, I don't hate it. But I do agree that the original is a lot better looking. It was unnecessary to make it look like a weird Pomeranian carbuncle thing. Yeah, it looks like a mixture of a fennec fox and a, a doge. And it's like, and then they made its head really, really, really big. He's got a big ass forehead. This is like carbuncle's like slow cousin. Dirt okay. We, st Dirt <laughs> we still love him though. We'll, we'll Dirt love Bunkle. him. That's yeah, maybe, maybe <laughs> powers come out of his big head. I don't know. Uh, out of his uh, little fat ass gem. All right, I'm done. All right, guys. All right. <laughs> We're hard stop. We're getting out of here. So thank you guys for stopping in. Head over to bodiesmanagementmedia.com, and you all have a wonderful day slash night. Good night. <laughs>